marked uh, the activity called the High Level PWT Dialogue on SDG. Uh, today we're going to be looking at mistraining SDG, uh, PWT into SDG implementations and program. Uh, as I said, we are here to mark a uh, high level PWD dialogue on SDG. My name is Prince Israel Reka, uh, the Executive Director for Connected Advocacy for Empowerment and Youth Development Initiative. Uh, working closely with Age People Chain and AMCD1 International. Uh, we are actually here today to to felicitate with you guys and also to also strengthen advocacy on PWDs in our policies and programs of governments and ensure that no one is excluded, everybody is included in the implementation programs of the Sustainable Development Goals in Nigeria. Here today we're going to be looking at what these goals are, how these goals should be mainstream, the role of PWDs in this role, why they are special, why they must be included, and also we're going to be looking at the newly introduced orthopedic kits for PWDs that we've been used in Western world. So we're going to practicalize it how it's used here, um, and uh, we'll be done for today. So I just want you to sit back. You have some. You can jot your notes. Any question you don't understand, you can ask the facilitators and uh, they will do justice to it. I hope you all uh, get me clear. We are championing a roadmap to sustainable development to ensure that SDG will not fail like MDG. We want to ensure that grassroots participation is heightened. Persons in marginalized community are being carried along so that there will be inclusive development, inclusive growth that leaves no one behind. So we want to ensure that no one is left behind. Persons with PWDs, they are very strategic, they are important, they, they, in disability there is ability, they have something to contribute. So, so therefore this event we are telling them the need to embrace the SDG and also be part of the mainstreaming process. Uh, thank you very much and uh, God bless you all. Sit back, listen and you will enjoy that. My name is Secretary at those states, Joint National Association of Persons with Disabilities. I'm Jane and Tomoli, Joint Secretary, Juna, and also leader advocacy for women with disabilities. I'm Major B.C. Chukumwem, the Salvation Army Rehabilitation Center, Superintendent of the Salvation Army Center. You're welcome. I'm from with Obiawe Jefferson, Assistant Secretary General of the Edo State. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. My name is Sajine Wilson. I'm the Admin Officer for Connected Advocacy for Empowerment and Development. The 17 global goals. Today you're going to be looking at the 17 global goals that were signed in 2015. You're going to know what these goals are and what they stand for. So when you are getting SDG today, you'll be able to know what SDG is all about. So, uh, Mr. Sajoni Wilson will be taking us through that link on understanding sustainable development goals. Can we please put our hands together for all? Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm again welcoming all of us this uh, program and I feel very happy to be in your midst today.
So I'll be speaking on understanding the 17 global goals. I'm very sorry, I thought there would be projectors so that we project what we have so that you can see. I never knew there is none, but we'll try our best to take you through these 17 global goals. So before I start, I want to ask this question. How many of us here have heard of MDGs? If you have heard of MDGs, please let me know. Raise up your hand. OK? Thank you very much. I'm glad that some of us have heard of MDGs. But I will ask again, what is the meaning of MDGs? I like participation. Millennial Development Goal. That is good. I think it is at the round of applause. That it started in the year 2000. There were eight global goals in general. And that goal was to be implemented for 15 years. So that goal will end up in the year 2015. The goal was very ambitious. So many things. We thought that if we achieve this, the world will become a better place. But 2015 has come and gone. 15 years have come and gone. What can we say? Has the world become a better place? So, no doubt there were lapses. But the UN felt, despite these lapses, we can't go home and sleep. We tried our best. All the countries that were signatory to it tried their best to implement it to the latter. But there were still lapses. So therefore, so long this earth is still being inhabited by human beings, we have to come up with something else. In September 25th, 2015, UN came up with MDGs, with Sustainable Development Goal SDG, rather. This SDGs has 17 goals, which we regard as the 17 global goals. There were so many. But the funny thing is, MDGs, which was small in number, there were lapses. Now we have the SDG. Now, as it is voluminous, when we study the SDG, you see it talks about every human being, leaving no one out of it. Whether you are a boy, you are a girl, you are a man, you are a woman, or you belong to the group of persons I call people with special needs. Because for me, I do not like to use the word people with disabilities. Because from study and experience, we've seen that there is nobody without ability irrespective of, of our various status, we all have ability. I came here with a video I intend to play if there was projector. You would have seen in that video that a young man born without legs or, or arms, he can do everything. He can type with the computer and faster than me standing here with my two legs and my two hands. Isn't that amazing? This guy is from Australia. That is amazing. So, me having watched that video, I, I strongly now believe that there's nobody without 
capabilities. So rather for me to say that people with disability, I rather say people with special needs. Your needs are special, my needs are special. We all human beings have needs. Is that not? Yes. There is nobody without needs. So I prefer it's better to use the, the expression or the term people with special needs. SDG implementation started in January 2016. So that means we are more than one year gone into the SDG implementation. Is that not? Now that we are more than one year gone into the SDG implementation, at this point, what can we say that we have actually achieved? The awareness, the awareness about SDG is still very, very low. So I think connected advocacy for empowerment and youth development initiative and eight people change deserve a round of applause for putting together this program to introduce to you who are very special to them what the SDG is all about and what you stand to benefit from the SDG. I think we should put our hands together for them. So thank you very much. This SDG, SDG has nature. There are three nature that is very common in the SDG. One of it is universality. The word universality, I think we are very familiar with it. Meaning it is done or carried out or implemented worldwide. Is it not? That makes it universal. If you go to the US, you will hear of SDG. If you go to India, you will hear of SDG. So it is universal in nature. Every nation, every city, every sector, every business, every school, every organization will benefit from the SDG. And again, one reason why it is universal in nature is that it is non-discriminatory. It is non-discriminatory, meaning everybody, irrespective of your status. So while implementing the SDG, people with special needs should be carried along. We know the kind of economy we are experiencing right now. Is biting hard on everyone of them. So, if some persons who have their two legs complete, their two hands complete, and they find it difficult to cope with the harsh economic situation that is ravaging the world today, how much more somebody who perhaps due to accident have one of his legs amputated or hands or anything. So it therefore means everybody must be involved. That one again make it universal in nature. It is non discriminatory. Another thing that is very common with this SDG that is identified as a nature of the SDG is integration. Integration. Now, if integration is a nature of the SDG, it therefore means that every human being, irrespective of his or her status, must be integrated into its implementation. Don't we agree? Yes, sir. Every human being must be integrated into each implementation, whether male or female, whether somebody with special needs or not, right? So everybody must be integrated into the SDG program. 
Or don't we think so? Fine. Now, if everybody must be integrated into the SDG, do we not have any reason to say that some persons should benefit from it, while some persons should not? I don't think there is any reason for that. And what is very beautiful again, why the SDG is integrated, is that despite they have 17 goals, if you are able to achieve the number one goal, which is end poverty, you will be able to achieve number two goal, which is end hunger. Right? Looking at it, there is a great connection between poverty and hunger. What brings about hunger? Is it not poverty? Is it not lack of money? Then if we talk of that, good health. Can you see? So, if you are able to achieve one, you will be able to achieve the second goal. You will be able to achieve the third goal. So they are all interconnected. Now, another nature of the SDG is that it is transformation. It will bring about transformation. When you study the SDG, there is no part of our life that the SDG did not touch. Today, we talk about climate change. Have we not heard of climate change? Yes, sir. We have heard of climate change. Good. So, the SDG talks about climate change. He talks about industrialization. He talks about production. He talks about giving employment to every human being, irrespective of his or her status. So, the SDG aim is to transform the entire world. And if it does, won't it be something laudable? That would think it would be something laudable. Yes, sir. Good. Now, if we agree that this SDG will do all of this, can we say we have achieved the SDG if some person benefit from it and some person do not benefit from it? Will it be wise? So everybody must be a partaker of the SDG implementation, right? Yes, sir. Good. Now, when we talk of the SDG, there's, there's something very, very important about it. The SDG is beautiful in nature. Why do we say so? Because this is a goal that involves making a big and a fundamental change in the life of every human being that lives in the planet Earth, who needs prosperity in a peaceful environment and deserving of partnership. So, if we must achieve the SDG, I cannot do it alone. The governor of the two state cannot do it alone. It involves every one of us. So, we must all partner in the SDG implementation. And if we must partner, nobody should be left behind. Whether you are a youth, you are a boy, you are a man, no. So quickly, let's look at the SDG goals. Goal number one says, end poverty in all its form. Why did the UN decide to say, let's end poverty in all its form? It is simply because the study that was carried out found out that a large proportion of human beings that lives on earth today. Today we are more than 7 billion people living on planet earth. But do you know that 
People who are living on less than one dollar twenty-five cents is very high. So if people are living on one dollar twenty-five cents, it therefore means that there will be hunger. Today, if we convert, how much is one dollar? Do we know? Officially, I think it should be around 350 naira, right? Yeah. Your is not up to our mother. 305 naira, thank you. So now, if 305 naira is given to you as a man or a woman, as a child, that you should feed with it in this our Edo state, in this our Benin, how much food do you think you can buy with it? A bottle of mineral. You see that? So, will a bottle of mineral satisfy you? Of course not. You understand? So, the world has decided to say we must end hunger. And if we must end hunger, who are those most affected by hunger? People with special needs. There are people who are most affected. Don't we agree? Now, the second goal says we should end hunger. If we must end hunger, it means we that do what? Achieve food security, improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. How do we do this? Today, how many of us here are into agriculture? All we do now, go to school, come up with good grades, start looking for white collar job. Even though we all know that these white collar jobs are not there. Yet, the girls are very beautiful, very good, but the awareness is very low. So this God that means all of us as a human being must put our hands together to do what? To go into agriculture to be able to achieve food security. Improve our nutrition. Is it not? So this is a challenge to every one of us which we must take up. Some person say zero hunger. How can we achieve zero hunger? To achieve zero hunger in Benin City, in Edo State, in Nigeria, likes in your shoulder and my shoulder. Can you see? This is why we say it is integrated in nature. Nobody is out of it. Godiri says we should ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all ages. Whether zero age, one age, twenty age, thirty age, fifty age. We must ensure good health. Are we together? So we must achieve good health. If we must achieve good health, can we take our food from it? No. No. Can we take our food from it? No. no. Can you see it now? If you achieve goal number two, that say end hunger, it then must be that you achieve goal number three, that say ensure healthy life. Is it clear? They are integrated. So all of us must work together in order to achieve what? Good health. If we must achieve good health, it means that we must live above poverty level. Is it not? Yes, Somebody who is poor, can, if he's sick, can he get, can he pay hospital bills? No. So, that is that. Go number four. Go number four says, we should ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities 
for all. If I were you, maybe if as you are writing, I will underline that word, all. Why? Because it then means it is all encompassing. Everybody is included. Is it not? Yes, sir. You do not make sure that we should only achieve good education for only people without disabilities. Does it state so? He said for all. So it means it's for you and me. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, again, you also talk of lifelong learning. They say learning is continuous. Is it not? Yes. Learning is continuous. You can learn at any age you find yourself. So learning is never well, too late. If maybe in your early age, you do not have that opportunity to have primary education or secondary education. Higher education like the colleges of education, the polytechnics, the universities. If you don't have the opportunity to acquire education from those aspects, you can acquire vocational skills. Is it not? You can acquire vocational skills. And if people like all of us sit here now, acquire vocational skills, what will happen? If we can learn skills, acquire vocational skills, what will happen? It means we will have something to fall back to. We will not always depend on government. We will not always depend on our family members. We will not always depend on our neighbors, right? We'll be able to stand independent.